Hi there, I'm David. And I'm Con. David, what are we talking about today? Well, I thought we'd just chat about my uh, Sony PMW F5 and just a bit of a work in progress. So that's your camera up there. So what have you done to it that's new? Well, I've been out shopping, Con. Okay, and, uh, naughty, naughty. I know. <laughs> I, I have purchased the new uh, viewfinder. Oh, right. Which is the DVF EL200. Right, so what's so special about this viewfinder and why did you feel the need to change it over from the existing viewfinder that came with the camera? Well, it's just a better viewfinder. It's just sharper, basically. Right. And, and now okay. that um, a lot of stuff is being shot in 4K, mm -hmm. focus is really critical because a lot oh, of the yeah. producers are wanting just like a 50mm prime lens um, used for the interview, shot mm -hmm. wide, and then they'd like to just have that uh, scope to zoom in. Mm -hmm. on the f so uh, the the old view the original OLED um, and I'm probably not the only one that would say this it wasn't sort of quite right mm -hmm. um, with confidence but don't you have tools like peaking to help you with focus well you do and uh, and I totally relied on the the peaking mm -hmm. um, for focus in in the old OLED um, but when I got the new one and um, thought I was in focus then I switched the peaking off Mm -hmm. And uh, my test was fairly extreme. I was actually just um, zoomed into a barcode. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was in focus with the, the peaking. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I turned the peaking off and I thought, you know, it actually wasn't razor sharp. Oh, is this on the new or the, the old one? Well, on the new one. And that sort yeah, of made me yeah. realise, well, just because the peaking is there doesn't actually mean it's razor sharp. Oh. So this viewfinder is a lot sharper. And um, I'm sort of saying, when people ask me what's it like, and I, I say it's like when you haven't washed the car for about six months and then you wash the car and, and clean the windscreen inside and out and you go for a drive, oh wow, it's, it's much clearer. It's a bit like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is a high resolution. Uh, yeah. It is, yeah. So is that the same viewfinder that they've got on the Venice, the new top it is. of the line It uh, is, yeah, the Sony same camera. one. Yeah, so yeah. hopefully that's an indicator that uh, mm. any cameras Sony bring out in the future, I'll be able to uh, just swap this up to the... I think that's the, more than likely. The, so um, what don't you like about it, if a anything? Look, it's, it's mostly pretty good. Um, on the original uh, OLED, um, there was a button on the side uh, which removed mm. all the viewfinder information. Yep, so the just gave you, That's right, yeah. Yep. And it just gave you a, a clean picture, which mm. was great because if you were doing a really long interview, mm. I would constantly be hitting that and just making sure no boom mics were in shot or anything like that. Because I, I sometimes get caught out uh, later when I look at something and go, oh, I didn't notice there was something there where I had a piece of information. Yeah, or the French covering. flag yeah. or the mics just popped into shot or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's know. right. So um, anyhow, so that, that's a great feature, but on the new, it's on the side and it actually was very easy just to make, you just press it in and out. On this new one, it's, it's, on, the, um, it's on the inside. So oh, it, the display? Yeah, so it's oh. not as natural, oh. it's not as natural um, pressing that button off and on because like I said, over a long interview, I would press that quite a lot. Mm. I mean, I'm nitpicking, but I, I got to be honest, I'd probably prefer it was, right. it was still there. Another thing that's glaringly obvious to me is they've got a different interface between the viewfinder and the camera. So that looks like a Limo type. Connector. It is. Yeah. Um, so it looks like it's the old one that goes into the side of the camera, but it is a, a oh. Limo connector. So one end is the same multi-pin connector and the other end going into the viewfinder is Limo. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's just nice because you look at that and I go, well, if that got damaged, that's... I know we can get it as a spare part. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I think we've got. Um, oh yeah, a couple we've got of some more pictures there. There's photos, the, yeah. I forgot to yeah. use my photos. Yeah. So I notice here in this photo, that you've got a nice um, markings for the diopter. And I must admit, whenever I use the F5 uh, or 55 cameras with the old OLED viewfinder, how many times after a, a few times pressing your eye against the viewfinder, my diopter goes out? Correct. 
And, well, Do you have the same no, problem? No, with no, that no. One? It's nice. It's nice and firm the way it should be. So it will never go out no. from pressing against it, which really annoys no. me about yeah. the old viewfinder. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not fast about the calibrations, to yeah. be honest. But it, it may, like in the in the rental, if it was in a rental environment, then it, it could be good for someone who's hiring just knows where to. Well, that's right. I know that first ACs uh, have to actually mark where the DIPs mm-hmm. uh, diopter is compared to the operators or even their own diopter. So mm-hmm. they mark it. So having numbers. Mm-hmm. makes it easier to remember okay f- for me it's this number for the yeah. DOP it's that number yeah, yeah. okay yeah um, now there's another thing um, is the price yes I imagine that's not very cheap it's it's not cheap but um, it's a broadcast spec piece of equipment and, mm-hmm. I, and I just think that um, you have to get used to it I mean mm-hmm. if you work in aviation or marine or the or the medical world mm. everything's expensive and i really think broadcast is sort of under that mm. banner everything is expensive if if you're going to do things properly and i mean mm. it's just you, you can't compare it to a you know built-in a viewfinder on the a7s or mm. a handicap it's just it's a different yeah, it's a different right. world and, and now that this is the viewfinder for the flagship camera mm. it's going to be good i, I can't mm. expect it to be cheap and and it's not like uh they're going to um churn them out like mm. T model Fords. I mean, you know, yeah. that's, they're not going to make them. Well, the at the end choice. of the day, these are the tools of your trade. It's, it relates to your core business, which is cinematography. And as you say, you know, you've got to get the focus right. And if you don't, all of a sudden the phone goes a bit quiet. <laughs> that, that was the justification uh, um, for buying it, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like you need an excuse, but yeah. uh, especially on moving objects, you mm. know, following people walking or following people running or whatever, I just, you, you need the best. Mm. you can have in this environment especially with the 4k mm. material being shot you want it as sharp as possible mm. well it's good i see here in this photo you've got some um uh, other buttons there um uh, have you got more uh user <laughs> buttons on this viewfinder than the other one or what's different i think to be honest i haven't really gone beyond mm-hmm. uh what i need to to know the yep. the menu um that's you drive it from um there which is neither here nor there but look at it oh i see there's a knurled knob yeah uh there where it says back yeah okay and, yeah. and there's not a lot to do and i think you can make the same adjustments in the camera's menu anyhow mm-hmm. so yep. i don't look it's pretty much set it up mm-hmm. and and walk away from it to be honest i don't mm-hmm. really make many adjustments yep. but i found there's good adjustment in the bracket as well because oh, okay with the um the f5 body you know i tend to have it pushed back Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as possible to get good balance, balance on your yeah. shoulder yeah. and there is good um, adjustment in this a good range mm-hmm. of adjustment in this bracket that comes with it so that's another good thing um, so great yeah. now why have you still got the old uh, viewfinder well look I, I've d- decided to hang on to it I mean I don't think they're worth a lot mm-hmm. on the second hand market um, mm-hmm. I like having a spare viewfinder because I had an incident years ago where the viewfinder broke Mm. on a it's an old beta cam so it was a cathode ray tube it broke um, it got damaged and i had to shoot the story Mm. with a um, crt monitor Mm -hmm. and someone walking around with a black cloth and it was a horrible experience and i'll never it gives me nightmares to this day Mm. to talk about it so i like the idea of having a spare viewfinder Mm -hmm. they're not worth a lot on the second hand market but Mm. i'm also taking a punt that because this is possibly hopefully now the default viewfinder for sony Mm -hmm. that if I do buy a new camera in the future, mm-hmm. then I would sell this OLED viewfinder with the F5. Oh, I see. Yeah, of course, yes. Because there's no point selling. Uh, yeah, you'd want to keep the, the, the good one and sell the camera yeah. one day Correct. with the original viewfinder. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I see your logic there. Yeah. Um, now, um, is there um, any? else that's special about the new one no look I think that's pretty good I mean you just notice straight away as soon as you mm. plug it on, it's just clearer mm. and it just gives you that confidence straight away so to um, go out and work great well thanks David that was really informative to find out the differences between the two viewfinders and I hope people also found the information helpful so um, we'll be back for more next time indeed thanks thank you